Namaste everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today in this particular video, I'm going to talk about a few specific things of Navamsha. We will talk about Pushkar, Pushkaramsha and Pushkar Navamsha. Mirtyu Suchak, which is known as Mirtyu Haga. And also going to talk about Burkuttam planets. Let's quickly uh, not waste our time, start with the topic. First of all, there is uh, one very, very particular thing that needs to be understood. We hardly, you know, there is this very particular thing that we put more our focus on uh, positive things and tend to ignore negative things as uh, they generally say. But what I believe is that when you are learning astrology, when you are in the pursuit of knowledge, everything comes as an information and you cannot say that it is negative or positive. When the World Health Organization announces that the next wave of COVID is going to be more deadly, more infectious, etc. We don't say that, oh, it's a very negative news and we should not listen to it, right? That's a chunk of information that we are supposed to use for our favor. Right, so we should aptly prepare for it and do everything. Right, so uh, this is my hand folded request to all of you. Whatever I am telling you or anyone else is telling you in astrology is a piece of information which should not be seen as something that is positive or negative. I mean, so first of all, <clears throat> coming to the e easy thing, Vargottam. Any planet which occupies the same Rashi. In D1 chart known as Rashi horoscope and in the Navamsha chart known as D9 horoscope, the same Rashi, when a planet occupies, it is known to be a Varguttam placement. Right? That's a, that's a very, very simple definition. Before I give you an example to explain it, I should uh, show you the horoscope of uh, Swami Vivekanan. And uh, why I take the horoscope of Swami Vivekananda to be of uh, Capricorn as well. Why? Because first of all, I myself am an initiated devotee of Ramakrishna mission. And I have the original birth details of Swamiji, which is openly given. I don't know why astrologers have ignored the already available time of Swami Vivekananda and rectified his horoscope to Sagittarius as well. And he actually is a Capricorn ascendant. Now, if you look at three things, the sun is in Sagittarius in Rashi, Jat, and the same sun is in Sagittarius in Navamsha also. So this is a sun which is in the same Rashi, Sagittarius in D1, and the same Rashi, the same Rashi Sagittarius in D9 that makes sun Vargottam. Coming to the another planet Jupiter, in Rashi chart, Jupiter is in Libra and in Navamsha chart, Jupiter is again in Libra. So being in the same Rashi, in Rashi chart and the Navamsha chart, Jupiter also becomes Vargottam. To simply put it, in the sign of Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn, any planet from 0 degrees to 3 degree 20 minute will be Vargottam. Any planet in Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. In these four signs, any planet from between the degrees of 13 degree 20 minutes to 16 degree 40 minutes will be Vargottam. And in the sign of Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, any planet from 26 degree 40 minutes to the end of the Rashi will be considered as Vargottam. How does Vargottam work? Uttam means best, good, better, right? In my personal experience, what I have seen that Varguttam planet gives you prominence. Specifically, as you look in the case of Swami Vivekananda, ascendant in D1 chart, Rashi chart is Capricorn. And the ascendant in the Navamsha chart is also Capricorn. So the ascendant of the D1 chart and the ascendant of the Navamsha chart 
falls in the same sign which makes the ascendant Varguttam. Varguttam ascendant is one of the biggest Raja Yogas. Raja Yogas are those particular combinations which give you a name, fame, status, recognition and success in life. Specifically when the Lagna is Varguttam, one thing that I have seen from my experience is that when Lagna is Varguttam in the same Rashi in D1 and D9 chart, the person, whoever he is, is one of the most prominent personality in his profession. The complete world follows him. And this is very true for uh, Swami Vivekananda. As we already know, Swami Vivekananda is considered a great exponent of Hindu dharma and religion and spirituality also. The fame of Swami Vivekananda, I think, is unmatched by any other sage or any other saint or any one else who is belonging to the same fraternity. That is because the Lagana is Virgut. This is one of the biggest, biggest projects. Virguttam makes the planet beneficial. It doesn't necessarily become the planet strong also. Take a particular example. Suppose moon is in Scorpio in D1 chart as well as moon is in Scorpio in Navamsh chart. Being in the same Rashi in D1 and D9, this moon becomes Varagottam, which means this moon will give good result. But that doesn't mean that the moon is strong. This is a very, very peculiar point that you have to understand that Varagottam makes a planet give you good result, makes a planet benefit. Necessarily, it doesn't make the planet strong also. So we should understand how the strength works. Suppose the fourth lord, right? Suppose the fourth lord is exalted and Varguttam. By being exalted, fourth lord is powerful and by being Varguttam, this, person, this planet is beneficial. Fourth house indicates comfort, happiness. Being powerful, this person have a lot of comfort and lots of happiness. Because the planet is giving good result by being Varguttam, it gives the good result of happiness from the fourth house. And because it is exalted also, it gives happiness in all areas of life. Versus the fourth lord is debilitated and Varguttam. In that particular scenario, as Varguttam, fourth lord should give you good, good result peace, happiness, etc. But because it is weak, the result will not be very grand. In such a scenario, person will be suppose uh, this person will have a good marital life. So he is tension free, relaxed and very comfortable, very happy in his marital life. But the other areas of life, he may be tensed. He will be tensed. Maybe not. He will be tensed. Right? So the prime point the basic point, the first thing that I'm telling you is when a planet is Varguttam, that planets give you good result. If that planet is also powerful being Varguttam, like Varguttam in the exalted Rashi, Varguttam in the owner Rashi, Varguttam in the friendly Rashi, in that scenario, planet gives you good result also and that good result of grandeur, you know, very big good result, very strong good result. Whereas if the planet is Varguttam and weak, Varguttam in the debilitation sign, Varguttam in the inimical sign, in that scenario, also the planet gives you the good result. But the quantity of that good result is not very big, right? So when the planet is weak and Varguttam, suppose, understand it, like a planet is weak and Varguttam is a gain of 1000 rupees. That is still a gain, but of lower amount. When a planet is exalted or powerful and Varguttam, it is a gain of 20 lakh rupees. So that is a huge gain. Right? This particular way you have to understand it. Varguttam planet becomes benefit, becomes good result giving. Right? So if the seventh lord is Varguttam, you have a good spouse. If the fifth lord is Varguttam, you have a good child. If the fourth lord is Varguttam, you have mental peace. If the tenth lord is Varguttam, you do good karmas. Right? So good result is given by that planet, which is Varagottam. 
Another thing is prominence. Vargottam planet gives you prominence. Right? Let's, let's try to understand it using our same example of Swami Vivekananda. The Lagna of Swami Vivekananda is Vargottam. Hence, he was, as I have already told you, Lagna becomes Vargottam. One have a very prominent place in society. He is one of the foremost torch bearer in his profession, which Swami Vivekananda was. Coming to the planets and trying to understand, Sun is Vargottam. And Sun is in the sign of Sagittarius. That's a friendly sign that makes Sun quite powerful. This Sun is the Lord of the fifth house. And this is Vargottam. Sorry, Sun is the Lord of the eighth house. And Sun is Vargottam. Eighth house indicates legacy. And Sun being Vargottam gives good result. Right? Prominent result. The results, the result is prominent, right? So Swami Vivekananda established a Ramakrishna mission and Ramakrishna Ashram, which is very prominent. Eight house, as I told you, also indicates legacy. Swami Vivekananda left a legacy which many people follow. Swami Vivekananda is a youth icon. And also because the eighth house indicates death and other things. Swami Vivekananda had quite a peaceful death, though he died early, but he had a very peaceful kind of a death where, you know, 8th house, I, I will also say one very particular thing, a very hidden trait of the 8th house. 8th house is also in his chinta, tension, right? So when the 8th Lord is in a Varguttam situation, the person dies without tension, which means when the 8th Lord is Varguttam, a per, the person whatever he wants to do in life, he fulfills everything and dies without tension. It is a death where on the deathbed, you are not worried about, oh, my, this work is pending. This I still had to complete. If I die, who will do this? This particular tension will not be there if the eighth Lord is that, that is what is happening in the case of Swami Vivekananda. And there's one Almost there's one more prominent thing. Twelfth house, as we know, indicates spirituality, moksha, emancipation, etc. This sun is Vargottam in the twelfth house. That also gives this gives good result related to the twelfth house. So certainly the life, the type of life Swami Vivekananda had, there is no doubt about it that he had a moksha. He had emancipation that is indicated by son being Vargottam in the 12th house. There is one more very important point that Jupiter is the lord of the 12th house and that is also Vargottam. It gives prominence as I told you, Vargottam gives prominence and good result. 12th house also indicates foreign land with son being Vargottam in the 12th house and the 12th lord Jupiter also being Vargottam is a clear indicative of the fact that how Swami Vivekananda traveled the world, went outside his homeland India and achieved the prominency in foreign worlds also by giving the religious speech at Chicago. The other implications of the 12th house as moksha, salvation, etc. We already know this has been very good, very brilliant. Another thing is this Jupiter is the lord of the third house. Talking of prominence, third house indicate courage. And Swami Vivekananda was very courageous. He single-handedly took the mission of his guru Ramakrishna Paramhans and single-handedly fulfilled it. In that time of India, in the India of 1800s, where in the spiritual stream, it was considered that the one who crosses the sea, one who does a foreign travel should be considered impure spiritually. Swami Vivekananda was courageous enough to travel to the foreign lands and give a speech. Right? That is the prominency given by Vargottam planets in the horoscope of Vivekananda, the prominency given by Jupiter as the Lord of the Third House. Another thing is the good result given by the planet. Though I cannot say that Swami Vivekananda didn't had to struggle. He had to struggle. He had his own struggles. 
But third house also specifically indicates the result of your hard work. Third house indicate hard work. It also indicates the result of your hard work. So because the third Lord Jupiter is Vargottam in the 10th house, the risk taking ability, the courage of Swami Vivekananda that he have shown. And third house also indicates the mission. The mission that he took that I should take money from the kings all over India, will go to foreign land and uh, raise the flag of my dharma. He had been successfully able to achieve it. That is because the third lord, Jupiter, is Varguttam in the 10th house. It gives both the result of prominency, good results, right? So summing up my point, the thing is that the planet which is Varguttam behaves like a benefit gives you the good result and makes you prominent in the field and the areas of life which is signified by that planet and which is signified by the house lauded by that planet. I think I am pretty sure about this particular point. Now there is one more thing about Varaguttam and this is my research, you can rather say. So as I have just explained it to you, when the planet is in the same Rashi and is in the same Navamsha, that planet is considered to be Vargutta. Now, suppose a particular scenario, a planet is in Taurus Rashi and Libra Navamsha. Technically, this planet is in the Rashi of Venus and Navamsha of Venus, right? In my research, I also consider this planet as Vargutta as well. But with a condition that such type of Varguttam may not give favorable result, but for sure gives prominency. I will wish to take some examples, one example particularly. Let's take the horoscope of Bill Gates. You see Venus for the horoscope of Bill Gates. When you check Venus, you will find that Venus is in Libra Rashi and Taurus in Navamsha. Libra and Taurus, both, is, both Rashis are ruled by Venus, which fits my redefined research-based definition of Vargottam. And as I told you, this may not give the result of beneficence, but absolutely gives the result of prominency, right? Venus is the Lord of the 12th house. 12th house indicates foreign land. And we know that Bill Gates made an international business. 12th house also indicates investments. And we know that Bill Gates had huge investments giving him very good returns. Venus is the lord of the fifth house as well, also situated in the fifth house. And fifth house indicates intelligence. And Bill Gates is, Bill Gates is you know, his intelligence, creativity, right? All these things indicated by the fifth house is well known by creating uh, Windows, Microsoft Office and all these things. He has shown his, uh, you know, futuristic approach indicated by the fifth house, intelligence, creativity, all these things he has displayed. Right, it is a well known fact. Right. So, according to my research, if the planet is in the Rashi in a Navamsha of the same planet, though it may not be the same Rashi, but if it is a Rashi in D1 and D9 owned by the same planet, I, al I also consider this planet as being Varguttam, as Venus in the case of Bill Gates. And according to me, this planet may not give the beneficial result the result of beneficence that is attached to planet who is Vargottam, but for sure gives the result of prominence that is promised by Vargottam. That is Mrityu Bhaga. Not Mrityu Bhaga, though the classics mention it by the name of Mrityu Suchaka. Just like Pushka is a particular degree in a particular Rashi which indicates Pushti, strength, 
and Shobhal brother, good result, exemplary result, and unachievable feat, a specific feat. Just before the shlok, just an another thing, just before Pushkaramsha, Mrityu Suchak is elaborated, Mrityu Suchak is talked about. This Mrityu Suchak is also a particular degree in a Rashi. Just like Pushkaramsha, this Mrityu Suchak should also be used in the case of Prashna. Sorry, in the case of Muhurta as well as in the case of Nital Charts. As already told, as clear by the name itself, this is Mrityu Death Suchak indicator. These degrees are indicative of or indicator of death, which means to say that the planet in these degrees suffer a lot. And it is like the planet have died. Right? It is akin to the death of the planet, which makes the planet very weak, useless, and almost lose every of his results. Such planet is very weak that they cannot give any benefic result at all. And whatever the significations of that planet, whatever the house lauded by that planet, all those houses, etc., also become very, very weak. This is a shloka, tanu, sarira, rikhara, kritino, dana, etc., etc., that I'm not reading. Eight degrees of Aries, 25 degrees of Taurus, 22 degree of Gemini, 22 degree of Cancer, 21 degree of Leo, first degree of Virgo, fourth degree of Libra, 23rd degree of Scorpio, 18th degree of Sagittarius, 20th degree of Capricorn, 20th degree of Aquarius, and 10th degree of Pisces. Is that Mrityu Suchak degree? When in the Muhurta chart or in the birth chart, if any planet is situated at this particular degrees, that planets indicate death. And all the good results of that planet die. Whichever house is ruled by that planet and whatever is signified by that planet, all these things become extremely weak, almost giving no result to the person. To exemplify this particular thing, I will present a particular horoscope in front of you. This is the chart of a boy which died at, at the sixth day of his birth. This boy only had a longevity of six days. Jupiter is at three degree, 18 minutes of Libra. This should be considered as Jupiter being in the fourth degree. If you check the list, the fourth degree of Libra is Mrityu Karak, Mrityu Suchak, indicator of death. This Jupiter is situated in the eighth house of death itself, is the lord of the first house of longevity, body and health, and is the, is the lord of the tenth house of the karma, and tenth house is also the secondary house of longevity, along with this Jupiter being the Jeeva Karaka also indicates the longevity. Jupiter being at 3 degree 18 minutes in Libra, which should be considered as being in the 4th degree in the Mrityu Suchak part of the Libra indicates death to this person. This Jupiter being in the 8th house of death, being the Lagna Lord of Longevity, being the 10th Lord of Karma, 10th Lord of Karma going in the Mrityu Suchak Amsha, there is no karma for this person to do in this particular life. Hence, he died on the sixth day of his birth. Just one more example about why we should take the planet in the next highest degree is the horoscope of Steve Jobs. If you look at Mercury in the horoscope of Steve Jobs, this is at 20 degree, 23 minute. This should be considered as being in the 21st degree because if you take this Mercury, which is at 20 degree, 23 minutes in Capricorn, if you treat this Mercury as being in the 20th degree, then because of being on the 20th degree of Capricorn, this Mercury will go to the Mrityu Suchak division where the good results of Mercury should die and the Mercury should be extremely weak. In the horoscope of Steve Jobs, Mercury is the lord of the second house of wealth and 11th house of income. And Steve Jobs is one, was one of the richest persons of the world. He made a lot of money. So the result doesn't match. 
For this particular reason, mercury at 20 degree 23 minutes in Capricorn should be treated as being situated in the 21st degree and not in the 20th degree of Capricorn. Right. 